We're Rock 103.9 The Bear. I am Tommy Carroll hanging out uh, with the guys from Copec. You know, I have Daniel, Brad, and Shane here. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks a million. Good to be here. Good to, great to be here. Well, glad to have you guys here. Now, you guys are from Ireland. Tell me a little bit about how Copec was put together. I'm going to talk about the name, too, because isn't that like some Russian currency or something? Yeah, it has a lot of meanings, but we, we just wanted a name that sounded hard and something that described rock and roll. So that's the name we chose. It kind of, we grew it with it and it grew with us and it kind of just stuck. Um, Ireland, it's kind of it's a small country. We kind of, for rock, there's not really much kind of a market there. So we decided we'd take on the big daddy and come to America. Try to kick his ass. Well, you guys have been doing quite, quite well. I'd, I'd heard that you guys have entered a contest where you won like a hundred grand. Tell me about that. It was a good party for me. <laughs> they bought houses. I didn't. He, <laughs> I bought some inspiration. He bought a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. I, bought a mortgage. <laughs> I wish I didn't. Buy well, you know, tell me about, you know, the making of uh, the album White Collar Lies. You know, I've got the record sent to me on in advance, you know, and I was listening to it. And I'm going through it. I'm just, I'm, I like when bands go a little bit further with the lyrics. Not just, hey, this rhymes. This is great. But I feel like the lyrics were a lot deeper. And I feel like you guys have something very special here. But tell me in your, your mind, is that something you're going for? Or what is, what's your take on those lyrics? Um, th with us, the first, the most important thing is always the song. And all the bands that we're into, like older kind of rock and roll bands, it was always very important that there, there's a message to come with the music as well. I think that if you can get across, you know, great sound and good music and then also have something to say as well, well then you're really doing it. Like, like people like Bob Marley, you know, the Stones wrote some songs like that as well. So we're really into that. I mean, it kind of make the song stand as more than the sum of its parts if you do that and kind of concentrate on the words. We've a got a lot of to say and it's great and we use music to, to vent that you know and there's, there's a lot of shit going on out there and music is the way that we can get our side across and that's pretty much what we've done on White Collar Lies. I noticed the recording of the album is, is, is really gigantic you guys are a three-piece band how is it to try to get that giant sound that you have I caught a couple songs tonight I've running all over the place you guys are awesome and on stage but getting that giant sound from the studio to live is there a, is there a connect or a disconnect there for you? Um, put a lot of guitar talks on the album. Um, I think the main reason why it sounds so big is because of the room we recorded in. It was like an old castle in Wicklow. But I always think as well that three pieces throughout time have always been big and you know like Nirvana, like they just have that sound that like everyone has to be really playing, really really playing rather than. I think there's less, there's less on it. If you have a five piece band with backing tracks and all that it's dilutes it. It's dilutes it completely. If you put a tree thing, turn it right up, and you have a great killer voice, you need a big voice. So it's, it's it, the whole sound is fat because it's simple. We can just turn it up and up and up and. It's more room for everything. More, right? Yeah, Isn't more room it? to breathe and rock. Yeah. Much. Well, I noticed that just it was such a big sound, you know. And then you guys came out and you were just in my face, and that's what it's all about to me, you know. It's good. We're doing our job, if that's the case, yeah. you know. But uh, tell me about some of the other tracks in the record. I know was that Love Is Dead. Uh, tell me a little bit about the meaning behind that. It came from a conversation between the three of us one day in rehearsals. We were just talking about how music has kind of gone down a bad road and all the songs that are in the charts at the moment are kind of very superficial and trivial. They don't really mean anything and yeah, it's all about love songs and you know, my boyfriend did this and my girlfriend did that and we kind of feel that there's stuff that's a lot more important that needs to be talked about and also we wanted to give a shout out to the people that inspired us when we were growing up and got us into music so that's basically where it was born out of. You know, that was something I did notice with the lyrics, too, that there was a lot. When I said that, there was something there. It's very deep. It's very meaning. And there's something I hate about these throwaway bands. Me being a radio programmer, i got to sift through all this and try to find that gem and try to find something special. And I've been listening to your record. I'm going, I, I feel there's really something like that there. And I hope that my audience and my listeners and all, they, they gravitate to that as well, you know? Thank you. We're, you know, we're flattered, you know. That's great to hear. It's something that we set out to do, so when people come back telling us that, you know, it really it blows our minds and it really makes it all worthwhile, so thanks for that. You know, a lot of record people come and try to tell me stuff, and I go, just send me the CDs, I'll listen to it. But I'm somebody, I don't just listen to the single, I want to hear the whole album. I still like albums. I still want to hear 13, 14, 8, I don't care if there's 10 songs. I want to hear 10 great songs, not, hey, we got these two writers to come in and help us write these two singles, and there's 8 songs on there that... I wouldn't want to wipe my butt with, you know. Yeah, we wrote all 11 of them. We produced the album as well. Um, we've been involved, co-produced. 
with uh, Glenn I, Hurley. We set out with a, a our main goal at the start was because of, and it comes back to the Love Is Dead thing. It's like with with new generation rock. There's great stuff out there, but you always find that there's two or three good songs on an album rather than there should be 11 that's what you're paying for and we're like we don't want to have any fillers on this album now whether we, we reach that we target tried. or not we tried and that's that was our target we're like we're gonna give people a rock album from start to finish an adventure it's gonna take you up and down and hopefully white collar lies does that well it's doing it for me and south bend's gonna be very hip to this and they're gonna be liking this and um i think a lot of people have already said some great things about you guys and i think there's some more great things to come for copac yeah, great well thanks a million we appreciate that guys one last word anything me messages you want to get out to the people before i cut you loose um just come and look us up on facebook and check us out we're going to be on another tour next month so just keep an eye we're for coming, we're, we're coming to a town near you so yeah. watch out absolutely all right, I've got Daniel, Brad, and Shane from Copec. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Be well and much success. Can't wait to come back. Joe Rock, 1039 The Bear.